Hi, Robin with OxyDry, and uh, uh, today I'm doing a empty, a move out. Um, I've cleaned this carpet for more than 10 years, and uh, this is actually the most soiled area of the home. This is the master bedroom, um, and um, carpet is 30, about 30 years old. There's a dog that lives in here with the folks, uh, Sheltie, um, although this time there's no uh, stain from the dog that I can see anyway. Um, but I just want to talk about a couple of things. First of all, um, the carpet is 30 years old, so it does certainly have some fairly significant wear in the traffic lanes, particularly in this bedroom. It seems to be getting all the wear, um, really. Um, but um, what you'll see is that although I've been maintaining this carpet with the OxyDry system for more than 10 years, this carpet has no significant soil buildup uh, and, and uh, no dirt traffic lanes. It just needs a, 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 another regular clean. Um, there is a fair amount of deterioration around the bed. Obviously that was uh, in the middle there has never seen the light of day for probably about 30 years. But the point is that even though I've been maintaining this carpet with this low moisture method. You can see this carpet is not showing a, um, a buildup of soil. It just doesn't happen with this process. And um, although that's sometimes the claim that's made, but when the uh, low moisture process is done correctly with a good product, cleaning product, and good technique, which obviously I am doing, um, there is no issue. Um, and uh, so I just want to put that to rest right away. So, um, now in this case, I'm going to be doing a two-step process on the carpet, which means I will be cleaning first of all with a fiber pad, which will scrub in and agitate the cleaning solution. And the um, <clears throat> major change of the carpet, the, the, um, the uh, improvement of the appearance of the carpet actually will occur with the fiber pad more so than with the cotton pad, which I'll be following with, because, um, well, the fiber pad has greater agitation and it will absorb a fair amount of the actual soil, although it's not very absorbent, it still will transfer a lot of the soil up and into it. And then I go over it with the cotton pad to mop it up and to transfer the remaining liquefied and emulsified soils and stains. This is the process that I've been using now for, um, probably about 15 years, um, this two-step process. And uh, when the use of the fiber pad came into the cleaning, carpet cleaning business about, I guess, nearly 15 years ago, uh, it was a real game changer for many who were using these type of systems because um, the fiber pads, which were originally just used on hard surface floors, uh, really made a difference. Um, anyway, um, so, so let's, I'll begin the process. And first of all, I've pre-vacuumed everything and I did all the edges and corners and I got a lot of, a lot out of the edges and corners, even though it didn't appear that it, there was much there, but, uh, that's often the case. Uh, and the vacuum itself is at least half full already, uh, but I will be vacuuming the carpet again before I'm done with the job. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, spray a little bit of uh, cleaning solution onto this, this this darker area. I did out in the hall already, but I just wanted to show um, exactly how I go about doing this to show that I really actually don't use very much. This is actually, I'm using LOC, Amway's product, a liquid organic cleaner, which I used to use as my main cleaner quite a number of years ago, and I kind of got away from that and forgot about it actually um, but recently I began thinking about it again and I still have some left and so I've mixed it up there's about an ounce in this trigger sprayer and I use this on you can use this on spots or you can use it as your main cleaner you dilute it quite a bit more obviously if you're not using it as a spot remover this is pretty pretty uh, concentrated at one ounce in here but um, this product actually works very well uh, and it is an organic product plant-based does not leave a residue. You can use it to, to clean uh, floors, carpets, windows, walls. You can even wash your vegetables with it, actually, according to Amway, because it's safe. But anyway, I'm going to uh, just spray 
And this is my pre-spraying. Notice that I'm actually not putting on a whole lot. Um, I did the hallway out there already. I just wanted to just show this part of it. You can see there's quite a quite a wear path right here. There's some pretty significant pooling and shading pile distortion right here, um, right where my toe is. <laughs> uh, and uh, of course, I can't I can't fix the wear where the carpet is so badly distorted. But um, overall, for a 30 year old carpet, it really looks quite quite amazing, isn't it? Doesn't it? But I, ha I have been maintaining this carpet for the last more than 10 years. And by the way, the first time that I cleaned it more than 10 years ago, they had been getting it steam cleaned. It did not look very good. It was very blotchy, very obvious dark traffic lanes. And uh, it was in dire need of a proper carpet cleaning. So I cleaned it and uh, they were thrilled with the results. And it stayed clean. And I've been cleaning it ever since. And that's usually the way it goes. So, we'll come out here. Uh, oh, I'll show you what else i got to do here. I've got this this room in here. Nice and empty. Everything's empty. I like that. And then we got this room in here. This room I've only cleaned once, I believe. I already did in that closet with my hand tool, by the way. I did, uh, did the closets already. Uh, and then... Living room area. I have some steps to do, which I won't. I won't film that. I'll just uh, record the uh, use of the my rotary here. So let's set it up. Hook it up onto the fiber pad. I'm using the the blue fiber pad, which is a little more aggressive than the normal white one I would use. But, uh, try to line it up properly here. Takes it a sec to sort of settle in. And away we go. Now I uh, recently uh, had a put a video up and uh, somebody asked, well, why don't you use a Orbital Almighty or a Challenger or a Trinity or a Orbot? And this question does keep coming up. I mean, I have the available, I do have those available to use. I have an Orbot. Um, I have a couple of Orbitex, which uh, one is a wheels down, one is a wheels up. But why don't I use them? And the answer is, for home, for residential, again, I don't like them. The, uh, there is no advantage performance-wise as far as cleaning goes, and I know that OP users will have a heart attack when they hear me say that, but I've been there, done that. Um, uh, this machine is more than adequate for virtually any situation that you will run across in a house. And it has some serious advantages, in my opinion. Number one is, look how it moves. I literally, I'm just holding it up against my my waist. I will slightly lift it to go to the right, slightly lower it to go to the left, and then just step forward. There's no effort at all in using this machine when it's running. And look how fast I'm moving. Now this is where almost all the actual cleaning will occur is with the fiber pad. And when I get back into the bedroom where it's more obviously soiled, you'll see what I mean by that. And when people talk about why the uh, orbital is supposedly better as far as cleaning goes, they're not counting 
this particular two-step process because most people who are promoting the use of the orbital uh, haven't had too much uh, experience using rotaries. And, um, but I've been using this rotary now for 25 years exclusively and I've gotten pretty good at it and I know what it can and it cannot do now watch this this room this is a clean room as it were it's, there's virtually no visible soiling and that cleaning pad is moving very rapidly across the carpet fiber and it will just strip the, the soil off the carpet. And don't, don't bother telling me how orbitals go 360 and these don't, because it does go 360, because as I go over the carpet, it's rotating 360 degrees across the carpet. And areas where along the edge where obviously it will only go one way. In almost every case, it doesn't really matter anyway, because nobody's walking there. It's a moot point. Get tired of it. By the way, I just finished that room. I just jump over the wire and move the wire. And then move it behind me. just feeding down just enough to get the carpet wet enough to clean it. <coughs> the goal isn't to saturate the carpet. The goal is to clean the carpet. I've already done in the closet to the left there. Actually the machine wouldn't fit in there anyway so I did it by hand. around the corner, you don't want to drag. Okay. About a hundred square foot room here. I already did in that closet. Let's close that door. I don't sell equipment, so I'm not promoting any particular machine. But the reason why I keep talking about why I think this is a, a very good option is because no one else is. Well, hardly anybody else is anyway. And I think the lowly rotary is uh, a wonderful tool. I started off with a 25 years ago with a... Uh, a 13 inch Clark rotary that I paid $200 for um, and every time I go to f I start thinking should I go and buy myself uh, you know the ultimate OP by the time I would pay for it and get it here in Canada it would be over $7,000 now I could afford that but I keep thinking and what would my advantage be I have a system that produces fantastic results and I have only got happy customers. That's all. And that's all that matters. And I like this system. I, I like 
I really like the way it maneuvers, and I, I've used the, um, when I used my robot, I gave it a try in, in houses. I bought it a few years ago now, and uh, I thought it was going to be, you know, replace my my rotary, because everybody was, that was pretty much when they first came out, and everybody was harping about how fantastic they were and everything, and I went and bought one thousands of dollars later, and I thought, okay, this will be an improvement. It was not. It didn't. Certainly doesn't clean better. Uh, and it, it's just, it's just awkward compared to the way that a rotary will maneuver. Night and day. Okay, I'm gonna have to move that a bit, and then I'll put that over there. Oops, I unplugged. This closet, well, just the edges. And I expect that I will use about a gallon in total in my machine, maybe a little bit less. Okay, now I'll just have to put it on this side. some peroxide on there, maybe, although it does look better. Hmm. Anyway, um, so I've gone over the whole room, but I'm going to slow down and kind of go over it all again, because this is the uh, more soiled area, more worn area, so it warns a little bit. Effort and time. You can really see the pile distortion right around this bed where the bed was. And by the way, one of the claims against using a rotary is uh, that it supposedly causes tip loom. Well, this is a carpet that I've been cleaning for more than 10 years. There is no tip loom anywhere on this carpet except in the bedroom here where it's tip looming because it's worn. But I've cleaned the rest of this carpet and this room probably at least 10 times. If I tip loomed, there'd be tip loom everywhere. And there is not. No, I'm going to have to do that. There's a little um, edge thing going on here where the carpet is sort of folded over. Hang on a minute. And I have my little handy dandy brush. Carpet sort of does a little a little dip there, so I'll come back with the uh, with a spotting towel before I'm done with this. Make sure I transfer anything out of there. I did in this closet already. I'll just do that edge there. I 
and uh, I'm cleaning with Nanomax, one ounce per gallon, and Nanomax is a 97% um, food grade plant ingredient cleaning product with a health rating of zero, which is the best health rating that you can get. It also contains a uh, plant-based anti-resoiling protector that, um, in it. So uh, all part of the green, um, completely safe um, solution. I added CLO2, which is a uh, hospital grade disinfectant deodorizer sanitizer into the solution, about 500 parts per million, which will kill every germ, bacteria, and virus on contact on the carpet fiber. And uh, it is, it has been approved for use against the Corona-19 um, virus as well recently, which is not a surprise. I knew that it would be. But uh, it also removes odors and is an anti allergen, neutralizing allergens from animals, plants, and dust mites. I'll just zip down the hallway a little bit here. And we'll do a switcheroo in a sec. Just want to go back to where I started. Nice long heavy cord. That's when you wish you were using a battery powered machine. That'll come eventually, I guess. But that'll add weight. <laughs> Maybe you can get Tony Stark onto this, figuring out a power source for us all. That'd be great. Eh? Okay. I'm gonna switch to the cotton pad. So, now I'll go over the carpet with the cotton pad, and it's actually dry, and I can feel it binding because the carpet's drying so fast, so I just added a bit of solution, make sure that I don't get any binding, you don't want that, there needs to be enough moisture present, this carpet is just drying so fast. corner. You can see the it's pretty significant wear in the hallway there for 30 years. Alrighty. Now this living room is, uh, obviously they don't use this much at all, there's never been any significant soiling in here, although there was a bad coffee stain at one time that I did take out, I do remember that, it was uh, over on this side, that was a few years ago, took it out, never came back. <coughs> The uh, pad, as you can see, does actually 
hang out over the edge so I'm actually able to give the baseboard a little wipe as I go along. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see, but right in this corner, um, whoever had been steam cleaning the carpet had really got aggressive with the grooming rake and uh, there's uh, scratching in the carpet from the uh, grandy groomer in the corner there. I remember that's one of the first time I, I came here and I pointed that out to them. And interesting how I see that fairly often and very rarely are people even aware it's happened. But even though I've cleaned that the carpet many times, that's permanent. That That's damaged the carpet and Grandy Groomer can do that on certain carpets. Doke, back to the hallway, around the corner, pull the slack. Okay, yes. Just get into that bedroom on my right in a sec. One of the really neat things about this particular machine is that handle release, which is right at my fingertips. So uh, I don't even have to bend down to lift and, and lower the handle. And that's a nice feature. Not too many machines actually have that. But it is helpful. It's one of the reasons I chose this machine. I guess I bought my first one, hmm, how long ago now? Probably about 15 years ago. And I have four of them. This one, my backup, a brand new one, which has never been run, and one which is in pieces and just has to basically be put back together, although I'm missing a motor for that one. Because I broke a motor. I actually broke a motor shaft, which uh, was my own fault. And that's one of the reasons I, another reason to, that uh, makes these such a great machine, these rotaries, is they do, they just last and last and last. Um, the motor shaft is broken because I was not careful when engaging the drive block. And there would be a shock go up the into the motor shaft, and I just wasn't thinking that. Just careless. I'm much more careful now. I did a video about that you know, a few months back, a year ago maybe, saying don't do that. <laughs> okay, into this bedroom. Um. I had um, <coughs> I had a motor actually. Um, it developed a problem as well, which I had rebuilt, which is actually the motor that's in this one. Um, that um, the cooling port vent, whatever that's actually underneath that plate on the top, had clogged up, and this is way back from my first machine, and I never never thought to pull the motor cap off and look at it from time to time what happened is it picks up carpet fiber and eventually it clogged up the intake for the cooling fan and uh, it got so hot that it uh, caused an issue with the windings and every once in a while it would just stop for about five minutes and then I could start it up and keep going for a while but it got <laughs> quite annoying because it would just quit and then I'd have to wait for five minutes or so on. And then go again. Eventually, I then I bought my second machine, and, and I learned my lesson. I replaced. There's a, a double, very big, huge bearings um, where the drive shaft for 
the uh, drive block uh, attaches to the bottom of this machine. And there's two great big, oh, they're probably about that big around bearings there. And I had an issue with a couple of them because of it being a, a center feed. And uh, before I figured out to use the deflector, which I put on top of the pad, it would sometimes kind of back up into the mechanism there. And I had bearings, I replaced the bearings a few times. Not expensive or a big deal, actually. Uh, bearings are like 20 bucks a pop, and I can replace the bearing in like 20 minutes. It's not a big deal, but it took me a couple of years to figure out um, the solution to that, and I've never, that was like uh, three years ago now, I think, and I haven't replaced the bearing since, so uh, that's minor, never had anything else break, oh, that's not true, I broke a handle once, grabbed the handle and just pulled it so hard, I was being careless, broke that, replaced it, I actually have a brand new handle sitting in my workshop in case I ever do that again. I replaced the belt, not because it broke, but because it was starting to get a little bit frayed. But this is a belt drive, which is really unusual too. And I did uh, um, notice that the belt was starting to get a little, a little frayed looking. And so I uh, guess a couple of years ago, I did order some parts and uh, or I got a new belt and I also actually come to think of it I did replace the the pinch mechanism which is in the handle release that's another wear point but I also figured out how to stop that from probably ever happening again too and um, and the answer for that is to simply that when I go to release the handle I actually push it forward and then come back and just release the tension before I um, release the pinch i guess you could say and it's just easier on it so there you go i'm going to run over the bedroom here and the hallway with this pad flipped it's actually not that much soiling on there uh which isn't surprising because a lot of the soiling actually would have ended up in that fiber pad which i already used but it's dark, and you can't really see it much on there. If I was using a, um, the uh, white one, it'd be more obvious. So I'm just going to run over the the um, worst areas here with this side. Be interesting to see if I get. I, I I don't expect I'll get very much off. I'll make it a bit. Most of the um, soil uh, extraction transfer will happen pretty much right away with the uh, fiber pad and then the uh, first pass with the uh, that I already did with the other side of this pad. So this particular machine is not actually a 175. It is a 180. So it's spinning slightly faster than a typical 175. Now, of course, there are th two-speed machines, um, 175, 300s, and I actually used to own one. And um, they can really cook along, I tell you. And I was considering going that route, getting a... An, it was an older machine, still, still runs. I sold it to a friend of mine. He's still using it. Um, but I um, considered it, and I realized that most of the time I would actually run it at a slower speed anyway. Um, but so I decided to stick with this machine. Besides, it had other advantages, being the, the handle release and center feed, and etc. etc. So, but a two-speed machine is a good option too, because uh, you're going to get a lot more energy cleaning energy at 300 RPM than you do at uh, 175. It's not a it's not a night and day or a difference as it were, but it, 
use an advantage, and I know that there's a couple of companies out there that do prefer to use the three, the two-speed machines, and swear they're the best, best thing to use, but that's fine. There is that option too, but they are twitchier, because um, 300 RPM, if you suddenly bind and the machine takes a jump to the left at 300 RPM, you're going to move faster and farther than if you were doing 175. That's one of the reasons I decided, yeah, not such a good idea. Because sometimes you'll hit an uneven spot on the floor, and you sure feel it with a rotary. Okay, I'm back to the beginning, and I'm about to turn the video off. Because, uh, but let's see what I picked up on the other side of this pad. Curious. Let's let's grab another one. Have to grab it up from the van. Okay. Take my booties off. It's a nice day. A bit chilly though. Was minus four this morning. And uh, let's grab one of those. Here's what I picked up when doing the edges. That's a fair amount, eh? <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's just run over the uh, this bedroom again and the hallway. Why not, eh? Feeding down some solution. So make sure it's damp a little bit. Looks like we're going to have a nice sunny day today. This is my first job of the day and probably about a little after 10 now, I guess. Actually, it's not a job today. So Saturday. Actually, this carpet's really looking pretty nice. I've never cleaned this. Um, carpet without the bed and the dresser and everything in here so I never cleaned the whole room
dogs can uh, really make a difference on a carpet because uh, the oils, you know, they lay down on the, I walk around on the carpet all the time with her little kitties and there's uh, oils that are transferring, rubbing off, transferring onto the carpet fiber. So they can really uh, get things quite soiled. Cats too, actually. Of course. <laughs> okay, you can see the wear right there. I mean, you can really see the pile change on the carpet there where it's been walked on for the last 30 years. All right, let's save what we have here. Um, okay, it's a little bit. It's actually mostly just wet. A little bit dark, but... It's mostly just dark uh, because it's wet. But flip it over and I'll just work my way back up to the top of the steps and we'll look at the other side. Different types of soil have different characteristics. Um, um, and interestingly enough, the um, I got a little pucker going on there. Um, one of the uh, interesting things that I found is over the years, uh, once in a while, I've run into a carpet that was cleaned by ChemDry, and even though the carpet actually often looked fine. When I cleaned it, the pad would just turn black, absolutely black. It was always an interesting thing. <laughs> I don't know exactly why that would be, but it's what happened. Something in their cleaning product just, I have no idea, but black it would be. Luck. You see, back to the handle release, you notice that what I did is I actually, I, I kind of, I kind of push it forward rather than try to grab it and pull it back because I've realized that what I'm doing is I'm taking the tension off the there's like a little pin, a pinching mechanism in there. It's a very brilliant way they've got this working. But um, there's uh, like um, bushings in there sliding up and down a shaft. <coughs> and um, over time, they will wear. I did replace the pinch mechanism on this machine about three years ago. Back to the beginning. There's the top of the steps. Okay. And yeah, there's mostly just moisture. And that's basically, basically it. So I'm gonna post vacuum. Oh, I gotta do the steps first. And then I'll post vacuum. Uh, but uh, this carpet, which was the worst, is looking just fine, looking great. There was that kind of brownish around uh, the bed. I guess that the dog was laying there all the time and that's all gone now, so. Anyway, there you go, that's kind of how we go about doing the oxy dry process and I just have to post vacuum and then I'll be done.